Greetings and salutations. This is Evelyn O'Malley, Lady of the Realm, with another birthday hey, video. And this is something that I did when I was just a little tall, and I'm sure you did too. I used to read these things called books. I'm sure you've seen them before in bookstores where you, know, you open up and flip the pages and such. I don't mean to insult the people watching because I always think that joke is really stupid, but they do it. They did it to us too about the television and switching it on and having us go, "Oh my God, we used to do that!" And now, don't worry, you're not the first or last generation that's gonna get it. It sucks. It's a dumb joke, but they do it because they think it's fun. But anyways. My favorite kinds of books, when I was little, were the Ramona series. I had other favorites, but I decided to pick these because these were handy and at my disposal at the time. So, deal with it. The reason why I like these books, if I like them at all, was Beverly Cleary and she. That's the title of the author of these of these books. I'll show you right here. That's better. So, well, there you go. And the reason why I enjoyed these books was they got into the mind of what a little kid actually thinks, not what they think we think. I mean, yeah, you see Ramona do bad things, but, you know, it wasn't something bad like, how do I put it, mm, giving the fing middle finger to their parents or anything like that. It wasn't like South Park or anything. Yeah, in fact, I think one of the things she does in this, one of the bad examples of bad behavior, is that she does in this particular book was basically she wanted to be like Willa Jean. Willa Jean is a like a much younger a younger kid than Ramona and she Willa Jean is kind of a pain in the butt brat. I mean think of normal if normal wasn't a cat. She's, she's cute. She's adorable. She loves to, you know, she, she loves to do silly things. She's always a mess. And this thing gets away with it. And in this particular book, Mona wants to be like Willa G. She wants to, you know, I, I guess Willa G got like a box of tissues and, you know, basically just ripped them all out and got to toss it all over willy nilly like a little. Like the little kid she was, as in the book. And Ramona was envious of this particular behavior because she wanted to do the same too. She wanted to be able to toss things in the air and do things like that, the way Willa Jean was doing. And, well, Due to her age, I think in this book she's like eight or something. No, she's like seven. Willa Jean's like five or, you know, four years old. And so, Mona's not really too, she's jealous, but she, her age is like, no, I'm better than Willa Jean. I don't have to do that. I'm more mature. Okay, which you laugh at because it's like, oh, come on, Ramona. Don't you want to have that you know, crazy abandon like you used to? And the truth of the matter is, I guess, I'm trying to think, well, just to get to the point. Later on in part of that book, she decides to take, like, a whole tube of toothpaste and squirts the whole thing in the sink. Yep. Into the sink. 
And of course, she gets in trouble. And you know what her punishment is? She's got to clean that whole thing up. And she gets to take her toothbrush. And if you guys heard back, well, the whole family gets their own economy sized toothbrush without any trouble. And part of this reason is I think Buzz Us, her real name is Beatrice in the book, made this comment of, Ew, we gotta all put our toothbrushes in there for spit? Which I'm thinking, yeah, she got a point. We're not doing that. Can't blame her. Now, a better, one of my favorite books, and I have it here to show, as you see, I had no problem with ripping it up with the along the vines. And the reason why I like this one was the infamous scene that they don't show in the movie okay, that was based on it. And I feel like Beverly Cleary deserved better. She did spend time writing these books. Not to sound like an angry fan girl, but I am a fan of these books, and I'm going to be honest. <laughs> That's about it. But, I think there's a part where, now I'm going to read it from the book. As she stood in front of Ramona, Beezus, uh, Buzz's eyes began to grow accustomed to the dim light, and she realized what Ramona was doing. She stared, horrified, at what she saw. Well, as if hiding were not enough. What would Mother say when she came home and found what Ramona had been up to this time? Uh, next paragraph. Ramona was sitting on the floor beside a box of apples, lying around her on the cement floor, were a number of apples, with each one bite out of it. While Buzz stared, Ramona reached in to the box, selected an apple, took one big bite out, the reddest part, and tossed the rest of the apple onto the floor. While she noisily chewed that bite, she reached into the apple box again. Ramona! cried Buzzus, horrified. You can't do that. I can too, said Ramona through her, her mouth full. Oh, stop it, ordered Buzzus. Stop it this instant. You can't eat one and bite and then throw the rest away. Okay. And this is Ramona's explanation. Okay. And this is outside the book, by the way. But the first bite tastes best, explained Ramona reasonably, as she reached into the box again. And Buzzus had to admit that Ramona was right. The first bite of an apple always did taste best. I'm not going to read any more into it, but that used to be the funniest part to me, because it still, for some reason, is. And, you know, basically, this whole book is just about the relationship between Ramona and Buzzus. A lot of times that was the case with these books. And it's like, getting to understand Ramona and her bizarre behavior, or seeing it from a position that Ramona had in her life. This one is Ramona and her father. Sorry, I can't see it, but there we go. And this one is just basically about that. Rona, I guess her father, got laid off. And Rona basically tries to get closer and closer with her father. One by, I think, she made a sign. I guess Mr. Quimby, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's the family's last name. Decides to take up smoking. And Ramona makes a sign, and it looks bad. 
Just let you know. Not just because she's a little kid, it's just... I'll show you a picture. Alright. Yes. Okay. It's that little thing right here. And that's what the sign looks like. No small. Small by itself. King. And talks about how his lungs are going to turn black and he's going to die. Which, that's not a hundred truth. But it's just how it's presented. You know, it's like, I have to laugh at it because, well, albeit I'm against smoking, you have to admit that one's kind of sweet. <laughs> now, I have some others like Ramona the Pest. I don't remember that one for some reason. I guess I forgot. Pence, but, um, then you have uh, this one, Ramona the Brave. Where she has to fight with a dog, as you see on the cover. Not, she doesn't get into a physical fight, like she doesn't, you know, get hurt or anything. But she fights with the dog. And then this one is Ramona's World. Oh, I believe this one has something to do with marriage and. Yeah. Well, no, 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 there's no marriage. Oh, no, there's. Her baby sister, Roberta, is about to be born, and she tries to tackle something called spelling, I believe. She terrible speller, I guess. And terrible cursive writing. Weren't we all, at one point? Anyways... I think one of the few things I really enjoyed about these books was basically it didn't talk down to you. And it didn't seem like they made Ramona's emotions sound stupid and silly. Just, she's eight. She's ten. She's nine. She's a little girl. So, you know, whatever. It's just like if you threw a ten for ten to remote your parents. My mom tends to remember this one thing that I would do and it doesn't look as good it doesn't look as funny as it used to, but imagine if I was like uh six. And I guess I had gotten in an argument with my parents and or they said something that made me very angry. And I basically did it. I am so angry with you right now. And it stormed off to my room. I tried not to laugh until I got into my room. Oh, and I tossed it. Well, you know, like most kids, they toss things around. And my parents, they... <laughs> Thankfully, my parents didn't tell me the story until I was older, because I can't be pissed. But, um... I laughed. That is a stupid thing, too. It's like... Yes. And that was only, you know, you do things like that when you're a little kid, mostly because you're little, and you're like, because when you're angry at that age, you're angry. You don't know how else to perceive it. These are your emotions. You know, you go bright, hot, red, orange, fire truck, yellow, not, well, you know, Anger that swells to the swells, swells inside you like a bloated cat about to cough up a cud or something. Now it's not it it's not that kind of anger yet. It's not saying you can't get angry like that. It's just that anger is not going to be perceived because when you're, you know, when you're this high, and you're yay high, hey, okay, hey, your anger 
count, I guess for me, is, yeah. I can't really describe it when, I guess when you're gay high, hey, you can gauge by how low my elbow, is, my elbow was, you think your anger is justified. And, you know, and for the most part it is, you only say it you don't know any better. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, and there will be more from my childhood years and my memories. Is, is and again, thank you for listening. Please subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Tumblr and Twitter. And as you know, we down the box in the subscribe button side. And I don't know if I, this is really fair to to this, but please click the button, especially the little thing. Ooh, yeah, I guess the bolts are cog. Yeah, it's a cog. And make sure you, uh, you know, click the little boxes that will appear. Okay. So you can follow me and get emails from my videos and stuff like that. For my channel. So you can continue to follow me here on YouTube. So, anyways, this is Evelina O'Malley, Lady of the Sign.